Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 23. I lost count. 23. Is that right? 23. And we got lots to talk about. I mean, now George is, still has the flu and he's still, you know, in, in his shed in Topanga Canyon. Uh, but it's a really nice shed as far as sheds go. <laughs> It's insulated. It has heat, electricity, Wi-Fi, all, all, all BIOS. The <laughs> and you live out in nature. It's just gorgeous out there. Yeah. But you feeling better? Um, doing a little bit better. I'm I'm well, I'm way ahead of where I was a week ago. So <laughs> I'm doing a lot better. Thanks. That's good. Well, it's Christmas is this week and Hanukkah starts this week. So we're gonna talk about lots of toys, aren't we? gear and whatnot what to look out for and things that you might want to give a shot for your upcoming year in voiceover right absolutely so stay tuned for that it's tech talk here on voiceover body shop coming up right now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the vo universe they bring it to you now, George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Number yes, 23. Baby. You know, I, we tend to forget to tell people, George, that this is what you and I do professionally. You know what? This is not a hobby that we just hang out and just like to talk about voiceover stuff and gear and stuff. We actually do this professionally. We, we make house calls, you know, I, we do when we're not sick. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, or we're, we're taking care of somebody that's sick or something along yeah. those lines. But when we do get out there, we like to see people's studios, but we can do it remotely as well. And we use right. Zoom and and all sorts of stuff where we can control your computer. We can see the space you're in. There's amazing things that we can do with technology to help you get the home voiceover studio you need. And we do it through a bunch of really cool services. And if you want to talk with George who does this full time. This is what he does. He is the master of it, but he's not. Uh, I'm over at master. George. Yeah, but you <laughs> are. I'm over at George, the tech or George, the dot tech, which is my short donate domain name. And you can head over there and check out my drop down menus for all sorts of services. And many of you find there to be too many options. So obviously just contact me and we'll, we'll point you in the right direction. Do you give and gift then, certificates for, uh, for the holidays? You know what? I wish I had a way to do that. I'd like to talk to the guy that developed my CRM about how important that is. And that doesn't exist yet. So huh. well, <laughs> maybe for Valentine's someday. Day. That's, that's yes. Yes. Um, and you can find me yeah. over at homevoiceoverstudio.com where I do the same type of stuff. 
I'm a professional voice actor myself. I really know what it takes to make sure that you sound the way you're supposed to sound. And uh, because I know the, the procedures and all those sorts of things, you can talk to me about what's going to work for you. And I'll understand specifically what that's about. Plus, I want to hear your audio. And I have a special service on my website, uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. You can click on the Specimen Collection Cup. Send me your audio, and I will analyze it and see if you've got audio that is, that I guess the best way to put it is, it doesn't sound bad. Because the idea is not to sound great, it's to not sound bad. <laughs> and that's what we do. We make sure you sound great, but we're not the ones responsible for your coaching or how you sound professionally as a voice actor. We just want to make sure that you get captured properly and that it's not a distraction to someone <laughs> listening to your audio. That's I think right. it's a pretty good ex explanation of it. I think so too. All right, good. So uh, we've got your tech update for this week. And uh, so you've been sitting around uh, blowing your nose and coughing and stuff, but you've been looking at stuff. What are some of the cool things that people want to, might want to think about as uh, the holidays are here? Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I like to give as many cautionary tales as anything else. <laughs> I'm not like, you know, buy this, buy this, buy this. You're going to love it. You know, like that's not my thing. So I'll tell you exactly what's going on out there and what I've been hearing about people talking about what's landed in my lap to try out and uh, maybe something you guys never thought of before. But um, first of all, this one had a lot of discussion this week, by the way. Yeah, I, well, there's there, I, there's this microphone from a company called TZ Audio. It's called the Stellar X2. And if you're wondering if you've ever heard of that can name of that company, probably not. Um, because there are a tremendous number of microphone manufacturers in China who come up with microphones that promise, you know, to be the miracle microphone that sounds exactly like something 10 to 20 times more expensive, you know, as at a ridiculous low cost. And then they make sure they put them into the hands of the, the most followed vloggers and YouTubers. Um, and, uh, and then that mic sort of becomes a phenomenon. And this is one of those mics. And the problem, and it, I've been reading the threads and the groups and I'm like, oh man, this is all too familiar. Everybody's <laughs> so excited. They're like, I'm getting mine soon. Damn it, they're out of stock. Oh, they're back in stock. Yay. You know, on yeah, and on. What do you think of this mic? Uh, oh my gosh. Know. And then people are like, wait a minute. This mic doesn't quite sound like the one in the video I saw on YouTube. This one's a little bit noisier than I thought. Hmm, what's going on? So, guys, guys and girls, when you're buying microphones, especially microphones, you know, you, other things like mic mounts and arms and accessories and things, you can experiment and get some cheap stuff. It's not, you know, no big deal. With, but when it comes down to a microphone, you got to get something that's going to be backed by an existing, a company that, that has a support network, a warranty, customer service years and years of track record. And even if they don't have years of track record, at least a team behind the, the product that has a years and years of track record um, and that they're going to be able to support that product. Cause, and, and I am seeing, you know, again, on this mic there, they, they supposedly have some knowledgeable support behind it, which is interesting and good. But the thing is, you know, when they send out a mic to be reviewed by a YouTuber, you can guarantee it's going to be the best one they've ever made. Uh, it's going to be the best sounding with the best parts guaranteed to be exactly, you know, a gold standard mic that they've QC quality controlled, made sure it's working perfectly and then sent that mic out. Um, the mic you get, there's no way to guarantee it's going to be identical internally. And even if it is, there's no guarantee that it's, gonna, it's been uh, quality controlled and checked. So, you're going to get that mic and it's going to be a total crapshoot, whether it's going to sound as good as that other mic that you heard on that video. Um, there's, they have absolutely no, that's to make mics this cheaply. There's no way they can mass produce them and do quality control and check and see that every mic sounds within a specific set of parameters that are really tight. Um, that is as much of anything, what you pay for when you're buying the top names and mics like Audio-Technica uh, MXL, 
Sennheiser and Neumann. That's, you know, that's partly what you're paying for. So don't get too excited. And if you are a gear split and God bless you, go buy one and tell everybody how amazing it is. Get everybody else to go buy one also and then put it up on their shelf and likely go back to using the mic they had before because that's what happens all the time. Yeah. I I mean, I saw a lot of discussion on this on, on Facebook and, and a few other places. Now, are you tried this? You know, somebody wrote to me and said, Dan, have you tried this thing yet? And I'm like, why? You know, it's, it's just another microphone. Yeah, but it sounds like a U87. I'm like, the only thing that makes you sound like you're on your, on a U87 is a U87. Uh, and if you really don't know what that kind of a mic sounds like, you really, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot thinking, well, maybe this does make me sound great, but you got to remember one really important thing. You don't hire you. And if you're trying to do things to satisfy your own ears, you're making a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, and who's to say that a U87 is the best sounding mic on, on your voice. In fact, a lot of people that have plenty of means, uh, have tried U87s and oftentimes put them back in a box, um, because it doesn't work for them. Yeah. We had um, Jack so Daniel just, on last week and he says, I had a U87, but it didn't work in a smaller booth. Right. Right. And he's so it is. Yeah. It's not necessarily a pro to have it sound like the U87. It's, it, it's cool that it theoretically does as many, many other microphones that are being, I mean, basically almost every mic is being sold now. That's a large diaphragm condenser mic is essentially based on roughly the design of a U87. I mean, that was, that's sort of the, the frame, you know, that's the model mic that everybody wants to achieve. Um, so there, believe me, there's plenty other companies doing it. And some of them are actually offering, you know, consistency from mic to mic. So Anyway, watch out for that when you're shopping for mics um, and keep that in mind. And if you are going to get one of these things, boy, you better make sure that you got a return policy. Um, Darn toot. Yeah. Now, I also, uh, so recently I do have a mic from a, a, a reputable vendor that I've been, that I'm using tonight actually, and that's the Rode NTG4 Plus. Um, let me see if that can be moved within frame. I don't think so because I just lost the battery on my second camera. So I don't know if I can easily put it in the frame because I had a wider lens before. Well, there's the tip of it. Oh, looks like a microphone. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, it looks like a microphone. It looks like a shotgun mic, right? I'm going to turn the side and then slide the computer because I want you to see that it just has a few little unusual features. Oh, got a number of different cool things on it. It's got some buttons on it. Yeah. So a shotgun microphone, as you guys are probably, a lot of you are aware, are very focused sounding mic, you know, very focused. They have a smaller pickup pattern. And so they tend to focus in on the voice, avoid a bit of the bounce around the room. And um, that's kind of a pleasing thing. Um, the the 800 pound gorilla of, of those mics is the Sennheiser 416. Um, and it's proven itself time and time again. And in the world of shotgun mics, just like the Neumann U87 is the one to beat. The 416 in the context of voiceover is clearly the model microphone to beat. And so many companies are trying to do just that. This one does a pretty darn good job of emulating a sound of a 416 for someone who wants to have a second mic that they can travel with. Um, I call it a stunt mic. They don't quite want to have the... They're going to invest in a second thousand dollar microphone. Um, this one does a pretty darn good job of getting a sound that's sim very similar. Um, and one of the keys that we found in testing it is to engage this button right here. And this is a high, uh, let's move my finger over to here. There we go. This is a high boost button, kind of unusual. Most mics don't have a boost button. But this one does. And I found that when you turn that on, this mic's character becomes a lot more similar to the 416. When it is off, it sounds more like their Rode NTG3, which a lot of people bought years ago um, because they wanted to get that sound of a 416 with a, for a little less money. And they found that it didn't sound like a 416. The NTG3 sounds quite different. But this one doesn't sound that far off uh, it's with that high boost button turned on. It also has a low cut button, which is nice. So you can have it filter out more low end. And then the other button on here is a power button. So it's internally powered um, for it most of us. 
Right. Yeah. Well, for most of us, it's irrelevant because almost all voice actors, all voice actors, let's put, make, be, be clear, all voice actors are going to have an audio interface with phantom power. So right now the mic is being powered from phantom power and that's the power button is lit up blue to indicate it's being powered by phantom power. So this mic was clearly designed for other uses in mind as well. And that's mainly video. So you can plug this thing with the right cable into a, uh, a video camera, into a DSLR camera, even into your phone with the right cord. And this thing has an internal lithium battery and will power the microphone. So that makes it a lot more flexible than a typical shotgun mic. So anyway, that's the Rode NTG4 Plus. Uh, literally unboxed it and plugged it in today for the first time and sounding pretty good considering it's capturing my nasality quite nicely. That is um, in great detail. You can tell exactly what's going on in your sinuses. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> the other thing they have going on, which is something I don't think we've actually... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Something we haven't had a chance to, uh, I think, actually talk about at all on this show yet, is this little guy, the Rode uh, AI-1. Hmm. This is uh, their interface that they came out with sometime last year. And a real quick rundown of the, pro, of the pros of it is it's, is it's pretty compact. No, it's not bulky. You know, definitely travel worthy. Um, and it's super minimalistic in terms of its features and controls, which I think is a good thing. Um, you simply hold down the gain button to turn on phantom power. And then if you want to mute your headphone monitoring, you just press this button. Now the headphones are off. Press, press the other knob again. The headphones come back on. Um, it's very minimalistic. And on the back, it's just Excel, um, TRS balanced for if you need to plug in speakers and then a USB-C uh, cable, which is the standard now. I mean, really, all new gear made in the last year should have USB-C at this point. Right. What else do you need? Right. It really, it's this, this is definitely obviously aiming at like the people buying the Scarlet Solo um, the Steinberg uh, UR12. It's a similar featured item. Um, I haven't gotten to do a super duper interface shootout. We definitely want to do this one of these days because, man, between Dan and I, we've amassed a huge pile of interfaces. Um, not the most interesting thing, but it would still be interesting to see if there's any real differences from one to the next. Yeah, I don't think there's really a change in sound between them so much as there is features and how it is that it can help you in your workflow right right the um what was i going to say oh the one thing i think that distinguishes this possibly is that the headphone amp in it is actually pretty impressive um and just to prove that to myself tonight i'm using <laughs> headphones that are you know studio headphones that are notoriously not necessarily easy to to drive um i'm using some really old so old that all the name plates and everything has fallen off by now um, but these old AKG um, 240 headphones, these are like one of those venerable studio headphones. And they, they require, or they use, um, they have a 600 ohm impedance. And when you're searching for headphones, headphones with high impedance numbers are, tend to be harder to uh, get a good sound out, or at least a loud sound out of. You know, if you plug in this headphone into a Scarlet Solo, and you want to hear what you're doing, you're going to be disappointed. You're not going to hear much. It's going to be extremely quiet. This thing, I have the, the headphone output running right now at about three-quarter volume, and I'm getting plenty of gain. I'm get, it's, it's plenty loud enough in my cans, and that is, I think, pretty darn impressive for a very affordable, uh, compact, simple audio interface. So it's got a very usable headphone amp. So anyway, for about 400 bucks, maybe I have to do a little price check. Could be a little higher, maybe 450, 500. Shotgun and interface together um, is a pretty, pretty nice rig if you really, really want to enter the world of shotgun mics and, and not be quite investing too heavily into something that maybe uh, you maybe are not quite ready for. You know, a thousand dollars is a little dear for a lot of folks, but this is a lot more affordable. Yeah. Now, what are these neurophone things? Neurophones. Okay, so this has a little backstory. All right. They were right out of reach. I had to grab them. So how, how, how incessant are those Instagram ads <laughs> that you see 
I'm on Instagram a lot because I'm on multiple accounts and they start, those ads start popping up. And this is one of those products that had been hammering my feed for months and months. Um, this headphone was a Kickstarter uh, product that eventually did get made. And it's made in, uh, it, it's designed, I'm not sure if it's made in Australia, but it's, uh, what does it say? Well, designed in Melbourne, Australia, made in China. But, okay, get to cut to the chase. These are called Norophone. And what makes these things really unusual is they are, they have a built-in DSP so that they analyze the sound of your hearing. I'm not saying I know how they do this properly or if it's truly accurate, but they truly do make an attempt at analyzing your hearing, load in to the headphones internal DSP, this new curve, uh, they call it a color, um, for your ears and your taste. Not even your taste, it's not based on taste, it's just based on how this thing measures your hearing, and then that is uh, what you're going to hear out of the headphones. How can it measure your hearing? I don't quite get that. That's... It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. So so <laughs> the rest of the story is why did it end up with them? I got dragged along to the mall on Black Friday. I love you, Fifi. <laughs> and, you know, we did, some, we did some makeup shopping and stuff, and then I stumbled on a pop-up shop, and it was this company, Norophones. <laughs> And I was like, oh, here's my chance to try something I've wanted to try. And uh, sure enough, she and I both tried them out. They had a, they had a very cleverly uh, set up subscription program, and I walked out with the headphones. You didn't have to buy them up front. $400 up front, or I think it's like 15 bucks a month I'm paying for these headphones. Yes, yeah, subscription headphones. Crazy, right? And what's even been more bizarre is after, after you finish paying them off, they just send you another pair. If you just keep paying the subscription, they just keep sending you more pairs. That's a fascinating model. It's really bizarre. But anyway, let me get to the weirdest part of all. Look at the inside of this headphone. Notice anything strange? It's, got, it's a, an earbud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe we can. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Um. <laughs> Um, yes, these, these are not really actually around the ear headphones as much as they're in the ear headphones. And that is something, that's the part that for me, the jury is out on. Um, by the time I started demoing them, I started getting sick and having anything shoved into my ears just drove me crazy. And with this sickness, um, also came along like an amplified tinnitus. So having these things in my ears was not what, what I wanted to be doing. But I tried them out a little bit. I spent one night just sitting in my house for two hours listening to all kinds of music and, and definitely enjoying it. But they do go into your ears. Now, that's why they seal so well. They have incredibly good noise canceling. For flying, they would be amazing. But they also have a bass driver that, circum that goes around your ear. And it's like a massive bass driver. Like you can physically see these things vibrating when you turn up the bass. It's, it's actually out of control. There's a spot that's about 30% up that sounds pretty good, but anything more is insane. Um, but the point I'm trying, the, for me, why did I get these headphones? I, I, I thought if these headphones truly do measure your hearing and they really are tuned to your hearing, then if I'm listening to your audio as voice actors, am I hearing the most accurate what it is that you're sending me possible? So when I make, you know, judgments on sound quality and set up your processing, am I going to be doing it more accurately? And that's what remains to be seen for me because I, I've gotten used to the several pairs of headphones that I wear on a regular basis. And these just don't sound like any of them. So I'm wondering, just because it's more accurate, theoretically, does that make it, make it better? Um, but in terms of, uh, you should definitely go to the website and see the video about how it measures your hearing, but Dan, it actually does play tones into your ears. Ooh. It makes like these little warbly electronic sounds. And I don't know if these are in any way re related to if you have your hearing, hearing aids made for you, cause I've never had them made. Hopefully I won't need them for a while, but they, they, they bounce sound off your eardrum and then a microphone inside here picks up the sound and builds this profile off of what it's reflecting off of your eardrum. So and they say. It is really, <laughs> yeah, it is hard. You know, the thing is, it's one of those things, how do you prove 
how how do you prove that that really works and that it really truly is accurate it's so hard to say but if you're if your headphone <laughs> excuse me if you're a headphone slut like me you want to give these a try at least and that's what's cool about the subscription it's a minimal in- investment and then anytime you've had enough you just send them back so still going to keep testing them for a while but um fascinating interesting weird headphones all righty uh should we do one more thing yeah we got the, this well the one thing here about foam windscreens okay the foam windscreen you, thing. you, you talk about it and then I, I have some thoughts on that okay yeah so i mean for a while now people that have a, a, a shotgun mic i've been just saying especially when traveling just keep the windscreen on the mic because it's generally going to just it's not going to change the sound all that much and it's just going to at least generally protect the mic it's not a pop screen it's of the mic. Now, that was my theory. And then recently, a, a client of mine said that a technician at a major company said, I'm sure you don't recommend that you do that because the foam disintegrates over time and little particles fall into the grills of the microphone and start clogging the little ports on the mic. And then it all has to be cleaned. And she was kind of taken aback. She couldn't believe that a, sub- a, a supplied accessory left on the mic would actually cause problems in the long run. But it really made me change my, my mind about that suggestion. And But, you know, it all makes sense. I've been telling people to avoid acoustical foam for years for the same reason. And this is no different. I mean, the pop screens that, or the windscreens that come with some of these mics, they disintegrate terribly, They'll make a huge mess. And that includes what goes into the microphone. So, Dan, what's been your experience? Have you Do you throw those things away? Do they sit on a shelf? Have you ever bothered using them? Well, here's the way I look at it. The actual name of the thing says it all. It's a wind screen. Right. And unless you're a reporter out on the street, there's no wind in here. You know? That's yes, what we're talking about. I mean, and that's really what that thing is designed for. That's that's a that's for a road, and that is for it's designed as a video mic, meaning you're gonna right. be outside with it and you're gonna be shooting it and it will reduce wind noise. Now, some mm-hmm. people talk about, well, if you're using, let's say, a 416 or another sh- type of shotgun mic, uh, if you're using it really close, it helps to have a, a you know a pop screen on it. And if you're using a, a condenser mic really close, you really do. There's, there's the one that, that, that Hook Studio came up with, this guy here, that fits on the end of a, of a, of a, uh, a shotgun mic. And I, if I'm doing promo work or something that requires me to really use that 416, in a way that, you know, you, you be close mic, I may throw this on there. Uh, but if you don't need it, you really don't need it. It's the, the mic really should, if you've, if you've got it set up properly, you probably don't need to have a windscreen on it. You really don't need a windscreen on a 416 or any kind of a shotgun mic. And when you're using it in a studio indoors, because um, am I popping the mic right now? No, pop, pop, pee, pop, pee, pop, pee. Right. The microphone is about three or four inches from my face right now, and I'm still not popping the mic. Yeah. You'll notice that George and I never have a plosive because we know the mic has to be set right. And if you've got your mic set and you've got the proper mic position and you're using proper mic technique, you can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers all day long, and you're not going to get any plosives. So don't get sucked into this vortex of, well, I got to have a windscreen on there. Unless you're doing this in your backyard, I wouldn't worry about it. These are sometimes used indoors for one reason. And I've done boom operating before. When you miking more than one person and you literally swing the mic like from one place to another, without the windscreen, you actually hear wind as you swing the mic like that. Yeah. Actually, what's the position? It's like this, right? You're holding the, the right. boom mic. Like this over your head. Exactly. It's uh, crazy. But uh, anyway, so you don't need that. You yeah. don't need it and avoid it and don't get the dirt in your mic. Sounds like a great idea. All right. Well, we got one other up topic we're going to talk about with uh, with some equipment in just a minute, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with that and some of your questions and a little discussion about multi-tracking right after these announcements. This is Ariana Ratner and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. <laughs> Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. 
There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Well, there. Thank you, JMC. I am waxing my mustache. Anyhow, let's talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan and his magnificent website for you voice talents out there, voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Look, you got to have equipment to do this. And you don't have to have is George and I are always talking about the most expensive equipment out there, but you need to have good stuff. And Harlan only has the best stuff on his website, the stuff that's going to work for you and not cost you an arm and a leg. And he stands behind it. And you know that you're going to get it really quick because he's really good at uh, shipping his stuff and getting it to you as fast as possible. So he has a lot of cool things that he has manufactured specifically for his website, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, which is you see right here that I am actually talking to in this very moment that you are hearing my voice and seeing me talk into it. It doesn't sound, it's it's not a U87, it's not a 416, it is what it is, and it sounds just as good as any other microphone, and it's at a great price point, and it's designed for voiceover. You cannot say that of any other microphone that's out there on the market. Harlan designed this and had it tuned specifically for voiceover, and it works great on men's voices, on women's voices, and people will think that you're using a much more expensive mic. But no, you're using a Harlan Hogan VO1A. Plus, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones, which are fabulous, and, and, and are, here they are right over here as he steps off the set whoa, and falls into the Parliament building of, of Hungary. This is the uh, the Harlan Hogan VO optimized headphones. Magnificent. There's comfortable new pads. They have a a disconnect on them, so you can un you know if you fall over and into your set and you won't lose you won't break the uh, the cord. They're great. So make sure you try those and a lot of other cool stuff. Go over to VoiceOverEssentials.com. Try not to fall over while you're doing it. And uh, actually, if you're on our website, go down to the bottom of our website a homepage. You'll see a picture of Harlan Hogan there. Click on that. That will take you right there. Peruse all the great stuff he has. The microphone, the headphones, the Portabooths, the Portabooth Pro, the Portabooth Plus, and all the other great things he has at VoiceOverEssentials.com. All at a great price, and he stands behind it. You don't like it, you can send it back. But why wouldn't you like it? Harlan, thanks for being our sponsor all this time. We love you. And what would VoiceOver Body Shop be without you? We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back in one piece, I hope. Um, so one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight was uh, it has to do with the, uh, the Apollo Twin. Everybody's like, I got to have an Apollo Twin. What's going on with that? Well, I've been, I've been, you know, big time kind of digging on those things for a long time. Um, and as I, as I've followed gear and recommended gear over and over, over the years, um, chances are at some point that manufacturer will let you down. Um, and it just, I think it's just a matter of time, maybe a matter of just, you know, numbers, sheer numbers. Um, but in this case, they, they've been having issues with the Apollo twin Mark II. Um, and I think also the, the, the Thunderbolt one, as well as I think the USB one and possibly also the arrow. Oh. Um, and the, the common thread seems to have something to do with, um, the phantom power. So people have said that, you know, when they're using phantom power mics, the, there'll be a hiss that starts to develop in channel one 
over time. And people have done different things to try to eliminate it. Long story short, I won't drag you guys into the dirt here because this is really only relevant for people that have this problem. But the chances are you may end up being having it replaced with another unit that has the same exact problem. So we, uh, Tim Tippett, who also likes this unit a lot, he started a thread on the Apollo um, Universal Audio Apollo Facebook group. And uh, what he's we're basically doing is collecting your tickets. Anybody that's submitted Technic tickets with Universal Audio, um, we're collecting them to try to build a case because it seems that they're not sure that the issues are the hardware or not. They seem to think it might be drivers or something else. So if you are one of those people, um, get on that Facebook group, submit your ticket so we can kind of gather a bunch of information and get it back to um, Universal Audio. There's actually somebody from Universal in that Facebook group monitoring that. And uh, we want to make sure that, you know, the problem is solved at the manufacturing end because clearly they've, they've made a very large number um, and uh, that have a similar issue. And they're just tend to be sending back, uh, sending the customer another unit um, likely with the same problem. So it's just a place that we can maybe build a little bit of a case. Right. So, yeah. And if you're not a that. producer, if you're not really doing a lot of heavy duty production, is, is, a, is an Apollo twin the best thing for you to be using? It's really complicated. I mean, I've, I set them up for people. I have it sort of, as they say, down to a proverbial science. Um, so I got to be honest, And if you're going to buy one and you don't buy my services to set it up, <laughs> you're, it's a total waste of money. Like Because you won't have a clue what it can or what you shouldn't do with it. And it'll get you in trouble. Like, again, I've been, I have the thing, I have figured out all the tricks and I can make the thing work well. But for, I've had several people buy them and realize it's not what they needed and send them back. Um, I've had people, I specifically told them not to get it, even though they had the money to buy it. Um, because I wanted them to have something they just could understand and easily control and adjust with minimal fuss. Yeah. Off, um, on, off, yeah, on. Yeah, turn up, up, down, a, turn an off, plug a. mic in. Yeah. What else do you need? Not that it's not a bad unit, despite some of the issues that they're having with it. It's an amazing unit for what it does. But if you don't know what it does, why it does it, how it does it, and how you set it up to do what it does, it's not worth it. If you're thinking about it, talk to me. Um, ask me Ask me why you should have it. Like if, if you're thinking of buying one, tell me why you want to buy it, what it is you're looking to achieve. Um, and if it's something that it, you will, it will be improved, I'll tell you, but for many of you, it ain't going to make a lick of difference because you can do, you're going to do everything in post and for the mass, vast majority of you, right. It's going to be done with software later. So you're not, you don't need to mess around with it on the way in. That's, and that's, that's the truth. All right. Now I got, All right. yeah, I got an, I got an email this week from somebody who was watching a, a video from a very popular online voiceover instructor uh, talking about how we like to listen to music to get the mood of a read while doing an audition. Now, when I was in radio, I would, I didn't have to do that. I would actually listen to the music while I was recording the commercial because there would be a record and I would have my finger on the record player and cue it up and the music would play and I would adjust the levels and do it in real time. Well, we don't need to do that anymore. Uh, but this particular instructor was saying, well, I do this and this is how I do a better read. So this person was like, what equipment do I need to do that? And, you know, my first answer, and when I told you, George, about this this morning, he's like, well, just <laughs> was plug in your five phone, listen on a headphone. <laughs> and it's not going to play over into your recording. So just listen to the music and you'll get the, get the feel for it. The other way is with multi-tracking and Multi-tracking is something that I suppose people should learn how to do because if you do podcasts or anything like that, multi-tracking is the way that you have multiple audio sources aligned properly uh, in a production. I do hear people occasionally saying they're being asked to send an audio with music right. mixed in. You know, like basically they're being asked to produce. Right. Um, and you do need to know how to do this if you're going to produce. Right. And we can teach you how to do this, by the way. It's, it's one of the things that George and I do is we teach you how to properly do these things. If you want to learn how to multi-track, 
contact one of us and we will give you a quick primer on how it's done. It's not complicated for just adding music underneath and stuff, but it really is the way to, the way to do this. So you need software that will do this like Adobe Audition or, you know, everybody loves Pro Tools, but, you know, unless you're producing Hollywood soundtracks, you don't need Pro Tools. But Audition yeah, you is also good. Have, Reaper, yeah, Reaper and uh, Studio One's gaining popularity. Yeah. Yeah, and you can actually do it with Audacity as well. It's actually, you can. You can do basic production in Audacity. Yeah. It's not elegant, but it, it will, you can do multi track production. Right. So that's the answer to that question. And then, of course, I said, why don't you ask the guy that did the video? Which probably would have been, you know, probably would have saved me an awful lot of time as well. But, <laughs> but he's like, well, no, I would have probably had to pay him to do it. Well, you can keep asking me questions. You're going to have to pay me too. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so we got a couple of questions here from our, our wonderful audience out there. One of them from our good friend, Larry Hudson, uh, who says, what is your favorite or your, your latest favorite warm mic for 250 to $400? <laughs> What do you think? I guess what he means is a mic that isn't bright. Right. Like doesn't have like a really to sizzly top end. Right. Um, favorite. Uh, Depends on who the, your, what your voice is. Yeah, I guess the Audio Technica um, AT, what is it called? The 4040? 40, 40, 40, yeah, or the 4043. Uh, 4047. Yeah. But it's pretty spendy. It's definitely not $400. Um, let me think of another one. No, sure, KSM32 is is not bright. It's not an overly bright mic. So I would define that as a warm mic. And uh, yeah, I think that matches that. I think that meets that $400 price range. Um, I think I tried a cat, a, no, an MXL, like a uh, something 89, like a CR89 one time, and it was pretty warm sounding. That was in that lower price range. Um, but my go-to for people that don't want to top a hyped sounding mic in that price range is probably the Sure KSM32. Hmm. Try a ribbon mic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ribbon mics are <laughs> ribbon mics are weird. They're all over the map. Some of them are super dark and bottom heavy. Others are tuned to be brighter and sound more like condenser mics. Yeah. And they're those are really them. all over the place. Right. Yeah. And but they're making them now. And I mean, yeah, and more affordably too. Yeah, and and they're 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 very nice uh, for doing very specific things. And if you want a nice warm sound, uh, the right ribbon mic might be a good answer for that. Uh, we got an interesting question from J Horace Black, which is you know somewhat essay style. Here this is uh, <laughs> just upgraded to a Mac Mini 2018 from the older 2012 version. Good idea. Uh, noted they did away with the Thunderbolt connector and have a USB-C connectors and two HDMIs. So I got an adapter to be able to plug into my Thunderbolt Apollo Twin. Well, there's your problem right there. Uh, however, it's not recognizing the interface. George, Dan, have you run into this issue with the newer Mac Minis? If yes, is there a workaround? Can you think of an answer to that one? Should we start there? Yeah. The only adapter I know of that's a guaranteed to work is the $50 Apple USB, uh, sorry, $50 Apple Thunderbolt 3 adapter. Um, anything else, there's absolutely zero guarantee it's going to work. So if you're going to plug your Apollo Twin into anything new from Apple now, you're going to have to shell out to the Apple dongle division uh, <laughs> and buy a $50 adapter. Um that's the only one that, so that's not the one you bought, then all bets are off. That is literally the only adapter I've successfully, and granted, I haven't tried others because really there's very few companies that actually make it. They may, I think Apple may be the only one that does make it, um, which is probably why it's 50 bucks. <laughs> but yeah, you got to buy the proper Apple uh, Thunderbolt 3 adapter. Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's probably a matter of, planning ahead and not buying something because you can there are mm -hmm. you know there there it's you know there are unintended consequences to these sorts of things so he goes on uh he says my good friend is a manager at apple well there you go uh and we're going to troubleshoot this in the apple store tomorrow to see if it's a bad connectors or something for now i went back to my older mac mini my goal in getting the new mac mini was to be able to use my use both my 27 inch K uh, 24 
27-inch 4K monitors as the older Mac doesn't have the capability, as well as having more processing power for editing video for the on-camera side of the business. These so are there's two, a good reason to buy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good reason to buy it, but they're two separate issues, and and you really have to think about, is it going to be, you know, what are the specs? And don't buy something without really knowing what the specs are. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, it, they, it happens to everybody. In fact, when the 2018 Mac Mini came out, I specced and, and bought them for more than one person and forgot to buy the stupid adapter. Like, the good news is that it is at the Apple Store, so I've had to run out and get the darn thing or, you know, whatever, um, which makes me crazy. Now I try to keep at least one in the car. Um, but it's easy to forget. But definitely when you buy new hardware, check every jack and connection and make sure you're going to have what you need to make it work. And, of course, you do have your old Mac. It's not like you're dead in the water. You, you were smart enough not to, like, buy the new one and take the old one and ship it off to your grandkid or something. Or your <laughs> cousin. Exactly. So, you know, you got to have a sort of an overlap. When you're upgrading hardware, you got to have an overlap, you know, from the old to the new, and there's a period of adjustment. So you got to, you know, that's not unusual. The, the, the Mac mini has four, uh, USB C slash Thunderbolt three ports. And you got to make sure you know that those are, um, those ports have two totally different sides to them. They are USB C, which is, can be adapted to almost anything at this point. But they're also Thunderbolt 3, which means they're compatible with Thunderbolt 3 stuff, as well as Thunderbolt 2. And um, do not buy adapters that are just USB-C adapters to try to use with a Thunderbolt thing. They will look exactly the same on the ends because they're the same USB-C jack. And I'm a huge fan of the USB port. I mean, it's extremely well made. The plug is reversible. It's hugely superior to anything else from USB. Um, But it is not just because something has USB-C doesn't mean it's Thunderbolt 3. So you got to know that. That's really important. Don't take a chance on that. We got one last question here from, again, from Larry Hudson. And I didn't hear anything about this. Yes. He says, any knowledge about Audacity being compatible with Mac OS Catalina? Many I know are dead in the water because they updated to Catalina by accident. And now Audacity won't work other than doing a workaround with uh, a terminal. So well, there's your answer. <laughs> if there's Thanks, a workaround Larry. with terminal, then you're good to go. <laughs> um, honestly, when, when is it going to be, a, when's it going to be supported? Ask, a, ask the company. Really? Oh wait, there is no company. company. It's, it's open source. Yeah. It's a bunch of volunteers. So it's going to take them as long as it takes, uh, to support it. Um, the most inside baseball you're probably going to get is uh, um, being on the Facebook group on on uh, for Audacity because there's one of the developers is known to hang out in there. Yeah. So you're probably best to find out from him if there's like an early beta, uh, you know, version that is working on Catalina. Mm-hmm. But at this point, you know, it's um, it's a it's a it's a shame. Um, you know, we all have been saying don't upgrade to Catalina. I'm still saying it and I will for the next six months to a year, but it's going to happen. Chances are you're going to mistakenly and it's going to nag you to install it and you're going to just click the wrong damn button one day. Every morning I'm looking at this thing and it's like, you want to update? Right. George said no. Speaking of terminals now, (laughs) it says, yes, I ain't doing it. Yeah. I can't remember if I mentioned this on the show already, but there is a trick that is a terminal-based command. It's called a um, sudo, super uh, user do um, command that will tell the the Mac to stop asking you to install Catalina. Uh, Do a quick Google search. You'll find it. Just search for have Mac stop asking me to install Catalina. <laughs> and there's a very simple code that you can copy paste in the terminal and it will, it will stop nagging you. But if you accidentally do it, can you go back to Sahara or whatever that thing was called? Yeah. Mojave. Yeah. Mojave, Sahara, Mojave. If you, <laughs> if you're, if you are using the time machine and backing your machine up, then not that it's simple, simple, simple to do it, but yes, at that point you have a way, you have a means back to get back to the old version, but um, you got to do it quickly because what it'll do is the system will then re re back itself up again 
to the new version. And eventually that old version uh, that's backed up on time machine won't be there anymore. <laughs> so you got to do it right away. Really the best thing to do is immediately just take it into the Apple genius bar and say, dude, take it back. God, I got to get back to Mojave. <laughs> this is my business. Um, and they will definitely help you. Yeah. So that's probably the best way to go. I've not noticed that, but then again, I don't use audacity a whole lot, but I, I do have it on this machine and I do have Catalina on this machine. I actually think I have used it and it has worked. So, it, so you, ha you have used it successfully for, it has not had problems. That's right. All right. That's well, that's more tech information than you could possibly handle this week. Again, you're probably, again, you're probably making, you know, <laughs> hanging candy canes and, and lighting candles and doing all those other things you do this week. But thank you for listening to all this amazing information and hopefully we've enlightened you. And once again, if you want to get a hold of George, where do you go? Head over to George the dot tech and uh, you can find all my tech support stuff. There's self-service as well as ways to book me for a real time session, either uh, remotely or on site here in the LA area. And Dan also is available online over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yes, homevoiceoverstudio.com. There it is right there. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and wrap all of this tech stuff up right after these messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine. And this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application, doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really want to be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. Absolutely important. Go get a 15-day free trial at Source dash elements.com 15 day free trial you don't need an iLock little usb dongly thing to get set up with source connect standard right away so go give it a try and tell them we sent you we'll be right back right after this question what's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover what's been the puzzle you need to solve 
the question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VOHeroes.com want to know. As we head into the new year, they're planning new courses and new training, and they want to find out what you need most. And it's easy to let him know. Just drop him an email at david at voheroes.com and let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it about auditioning? Is it about booking more work, finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions? Whatever that one thing is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or that you've always wanted to know about success in VO, email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. That's david at voheroes.com. This is Anthony Mendez. You're watching Voice Over Buddy. And we're back to say goodbye. Uh, well, that was a lot of information, and that was really cool. Uh, but That's uh, what we do. I know. Next week, I think we're going to have a bit of a party show. We'll see who shows up for that could be anything. yeah yeah and you'll be feeling better by that oh uh, please yes uh and then uh it'll be 2020 2020 as barbara walters used to say uh right. who are our donors of the week let's go take a look uh heading over to my notes we have michael kearns rob Ryder, christy burns uh joseph harrison brian roush graham spicer Antland Productions, Michelle Blinker, and Sarah Borges. All Thank right. you, everybody. Thank you. We appreciate it. Hey, show us your booths. We want to see what your booths look like. Like this really elegant one here. Uh, <laughs> the entire city of Budapest. Um, <laughs> we want to see what you guys are doing with your booths. Uh, you know, they're your voiceover shrines. We want to highlight them, and you could have us sitting in your booth, which is really kind of cool. Send them to, and to make sure you take them in portrait, not landscape. And send them to the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV. All right. Uh, also, uh, we'd love to have you live in the studio. We're here every other Monday night. <laughs> I think we'll have a few people here next week. Uh, but write to us again. If you're in the Los Angeles area and you can be here on a Monday night and we're doing a show that night, we'd love to have you. Write to us again uh, to the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV and mark the subject as audience. All right. Love to see you guys. I know. Uh, hey, we need to thank our amazing sponsors like uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live <laughs> VoiceOver Studio Webcasting and Replays as well. Uh, and of course, Sue Merlino for the amazing job she does as our technical director, making it seem effortless, but we have to towel her off after every show because she's really sweating it out. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. So thanks Lee for being Merry here. Merry Christmas, Lee. Yeah. And that's what we'd really like to say to all of you is happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy whatever else you celebrate this time of year. George and I are here to help you out with your home voiceover studios, and we'd like to both wish you all the best in 2020. But we'll get to do that that's next right. week, too. Anyway, that's, that's, right. gonna, that's gonna do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.